week, scouting players at the Senior Bowl. We heard from Will Greer there. Let's talk a little bit about guys who protect the quarterback. Who stood out to you as, on the offensive line group in Mobile, Charlie? Well, I, yeah, I tell, you, I tell you a guy I was fascinated about going to see is Titus Howard from Alabama State. It's Ron Armstead. Excellent left tackle from the New Orleans Saints. Uh, kind of reminded me of him when I was reading the scouting reports. I go down there, watch him. I like his athletic ability, his ability to move. I think this guy's got a chance to play at the tackle position. This is a big week for him because level of competition. He's playing better players now than he's ever played. He was holding his own when I watched him. Okay? And then we move over to the left tackle position, uh, talking about uh, from the University of Washington, uh, Dillard. Now, you see them? See how he kept his ba balance there and slid? This guy, to me, has the athletic ability to be the left tackle. I'd like him to have more strength as you watch them there in the video and the anchor. That's what he's got to get better at. But I liked his punch and his slide ability to be a pass protector in the National Football League, late one to a two. Yeah, t tough to get some really good tape on the one-on-ones uh, on the senior bowl from the offensive line against the defensive line. The defensive guys having that advantage down there. Let's look at some of them. Charlie, who's standing out to you on the defensive line? Well, Zach Allen, to me, was the highest-rated guy coming in, and I didn't see anything different when I watched practice in here. Now, the thing with him is I like the motor. I like the knee bend. I like the consistency versus run and pass. I also saw, you know, the guy have some moves, as you see there, some explosiveness uh, in his pass rush. So I saw kind of a whole package. Uh, we'll see how he develops in the spring with the workouts and where it sits out. But he's, he's certainly a number one draft choice to me. Then we're going to go to the University of Oregon, Jalen Jelks. Now, you see that quickness on that stunt there? That's what, to me, his explosive quickness jumped off the screen. Now, he's not a big guy. That's where he's going to get in trouble there against the run. And you can see strength is a little bit of a problem when you watch the video there that we're watching. But I did like the explosion and the strength, to me, 43 outside linebacker. Uh, then my third one guy, Isaiah Bugs from the University of Alabama, number 49 here. Now, uh, plays inside. Best thing he does on tape is pass rush, quickness, athletic ability. I saw all of that in practice. What you're trying to do when, when I say these things is that on tape versus practice, you can evaluate athletic ability and quickness more accurately live than you can on tape. The tape does not really show that as clear as you'd like to see. So when I'm watching, uh, you know, Jalen Jelks and Bugs, hey, that quickness jumps off the screen to me on the tape, but it was even more impressive live. Yeah, Bugs able to get nine and a half sacks in his final season playing for Nick Saban's defense at Alabama. RGM, Charlie Castle, sharing his evaluations of the Senior Bowl with you guys and folks the last time. These draft eligible players will be in pads with their team helmets on before they draft it. The 70th Reese's Senior Bowl coming up tomorrow, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. See how all of these stars finish up their week of evaluation. The game exclusively available to you on NFL Network. Time for us to get some hot reads. News coming from around the NFL. We start, you heard from Steve Weiss just on how much of a walking quote Wade Phillips is. Well, this is what Wade had to say about touchdown Tom this week. Well, it's a challenge, but we, we've, we've started our process. We, we, uh, we try to, you know, give them the game plan, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's a real challenge to fool a quarterback. Like that. And I said that about Breeze the same way. You're not going to really fool those guys. You've got to play tremendous um, technique and play, play really well in what you do. And one thing that we'll have a chance to hear a lot about next week is the matchup between Sean McVay and Julian Edelman. These guys played when McVay was playing for Miami of Ohio, and Edelman was the quarterback at Kent State. Well, how about this? John Harbaugh getting into that conversation today at his news conference. He has some thoughts about Sean McVay as a wide receiver. I joke with him all the time. You know, he's a wide receiver. I was a boundary corner. I'm quite confident that I could have shut him down. I mean, come on, Mike, what do you think of the matchup, you know? So, uh, and he knows that, and I think he, 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 he might have disagreed with me this summer a little bit, but we should have lined up in a one-on-one -on -one drill. I mean, you know, he's got like 25 years on me, though. We've got to set that up next time, get those guys to go one-on-one. -on -one. Cam Newton on the mend. The Panthers did not put a timeline on Cam's offseason availability after he had shoulder surgery on Thursday. The hope is that he won't miss a lot of time. NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport reported that they will try to get Cam throwing by OTAs so he can be ready for training camp. And after that